Hi there folks, my name is Nova Blue and I'm an In Infinity War streamer and here I'm just doing a short guide on the basic overview of the battlefield and a basic overview of the cards. Just a general uh, just idea of everything just to get you guys into the game and playing. So here we go, I'll jump straight into it. First of all you have the Assault and Defense Zones right here. Um, they're pretty self-explanatory, obviously you attack their base, their health, with the Assault Zone and you defend yours with the Defense Zone. Pretty self-explanatory. There are two ways of killing an opponent's, um, of beating an opponent, either destroying their health or destroying their morale, and I'll explain the morale a bit more when I get into how the cards are laid out. Okay then, just to start with, um, you've, all, sorry, you've also got the support zone as well. The support zone is very, very important for different plays. The support zone is harder to hit. Uh, a lot of spells only hit the assault and defense zone, and not the support zone. So it's basically this support zone and the uh, the command zone, which I'll explain in a second, are the safest place for cards. So if, for example, I've played this card the previous turn, which is a wealthy noble, uh, is a one cost resource card. Uh, so I place it out, and if that, that turn it's played out, it is exhausted. It turns red, it is exhausted. Um, that means that you cannot, once you play it out into the support zone, you cannot move it that turn. You have to wait another turn before you can move it around. After that, you can move it around freely, wherever you like, in the assault, defense, or support zone. The command zone is slightly different. These cards are available to you straight away. This is how you design a deck, and this, this what is in your command zone shows what's in your deck. Um, so you can kind of tell what deck they're going for by the command zone but not always, it, it's a hint to it. So if you if a card is in the command zone, I can play it straight from the command zone if I wish. Um, it, you still have to pay the resource cost of the card, that's very important. You still have to play the resource cost of the card, but you can play it straight from the command zone anywhere I like. Um, so yeah, and now I'll explain just a little bit through the cards. Here we have Kali the Flaming Blade. All the cards are beautifully animated. Some of them are better than others, and some of them are absolutely just phenomenal. They're great, and the the stuff that I've seen preview art for coming for the next infestation set is going to be even better. So, just for the cards' looks, ten out of ten. Okay, I'll explain the basis of the card. Here we have the resource cost at the top, fairly self-explanatory. Uh, you pay three resources to play this card out. Very simple. Underneath that, you have the morale cost of the card. So basically, if this card dies, I lose 8 morale. And if my morale drops to 0, I lose. It's an alternative win-loss condition. So if I'm attacking an enemy, I've got, if I'm making a deck, I either choose if it's going to be destroy them via health or via morale. And there are valid morale decks in the current meta. So that's, that's what that is there. And it's usually, generally, double the cost of the resource. Uh, down here you've got the rarity of the card. Rarity goes common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary. That's the way it goes. Um, here you've got the character's attack, character's health, you've got the number of the card in the set, you've got the um, uh, artist at the bottom there. In the top hand corner right here, with each faction in Infinity Wars, uh, you have to ha each card has a purity for that faction. So this card has a one purity um, flamed on. So it's one purity flamed on. That basically means with the command zone. This all relates to the command zone. So basically, if I want to play a two purity card, which is right here, this is a two purity flamed on card. If I want to be able to play this card, or ha even have it in my deck, I need to have two flamed on commanders. They don't have to be two purity, you just have to have two flamed on commanders, which I have here. The Knight of the Flamed On and Kali the Flaming Blade. Um, on top of that, you I have this one, which is a Varor card, uh, which is the purple faction. Um, this is a one purity purple faction. If I were to put a two purity card here, it would not let me. It would say the deck is illegal, because I can, if we're only having this Varor card here, I can put one purity of Varor spells and Varor abilities and Varor cards in the deck. But I can have two purity uh, Flamed On cards. Uh, obviously, if I wanted three purity cards, which there are, if I wanted a three purity Flamed On, I would have to have every single commander slot uh, with a Flamed On in it. Uh, so that's how what you determine what's in people's decks. So you 
you, you, the three purity decks are viable at the moment. They are fun to play as well. There are three. There's one three purity card for every single faction apart from Exiles at the moment. Uh, on top of that, you have factionless cards. Factionless cards do not have a purity. They do not have a purity, so they can be placed in any deck. They are generally abilities and characters that are either unique to themselves and are very expensive to play or their abilities that are similar to other factions but cost more. For example, there's a card in Varor that does 4 damage to a target. It costs 1. And in the factionless, there is a ability called Fireball which costs 2, which does the same thing. It does 4 damage. Um, so that's basically the, the, the general overview of the cards and everything like that. So the aim of the game is obviously to kill their health and morale. Or morale, I should I say, either or. Um, after that, there are a few other things I'll explain. You've obviously got ability cards, which are right here. You've got um, obviously normal character cards. You have um, artifact cards, which I can't show you at the moment, but I will show you in a minute. Uh, artifact cards, which are basically they have an ability on them. Uh, you play them out, um, and they ha either have an active ability or they have a passive ability. Either one. You also have location cards. Location cards are placed down and they do actually change the landscape of the board, which is brilliant. It's, they've got some really cool effects. They change the landscape of the board, it is fantastic when you do it. They have all sorts of abilities, and I'll show you a couple of them, a couple of examples of them after this. Okay, I will explain a couple of things extra on the card as well. If you look at the card, sometimes a card will have an ability here, an extra ability when they're played. Uh, you can have abilities that are played when the card is played out, you have active abilities on certain character cards, all kinds of stuff. So this particular card has charge. Charge means, because when usually you play a card out, it's exhausted in the sports zone for a turn. If it has a certain ability on it, like charge for example, characters with charge are moved directly to the assault zone. So if I play that out, it throws it straight into the assault zone. Uh, there is a defensive version of this called Vigilance, so if you, a card has Vigilance, it throws it straight out into the defense zone. And if the card has Haste, Haste means it can be played anywhere on the board. So you can play it straight from the hand, you can play it absolutely anywhere. It's really powerful, really powerful ability. Um, beyond that, there are so many more abilities and it will take me ages to go through them also. I'll just leave it at that for now. Uh, well, I will explain the Demon of Fear card. Well, this is obviously Flying. Uh, let me just end a couple of turns so I get enough resources to play this card. Bear with me a second. Oh, I can show you an artifact card right here. So if I play this card out, you'll notice it is flying. Flying cards literally hover and they attack over the top of normal cards. Fairly self-explanatory, but you can see because it's flying. It's literally flying. Um, okay, I'll explain the resources and the general UI as well. Right, so you've got your resource bar at the top, your opponent's resource bar as well. You'll notice that I have one more extra resource than my opponent. That is because of oh, this Wealthy Noble. As long as this card is on the battlefield, I have one extra resource. There are a few cards that do this. There are some cards that give it passively. There's, it's, it, it's, 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 it's like a resource. It's a resource gain. A uh, permanent resource gain. But they can kill this. Uh, and if it's killed, I do lose a very big chunk of morale. I lose 10 morale for that dying. So, and it's only 0 2. So it doesn't do any damage. You just kind of leave it in support and it will give you resources every turn. Up at the top here, I'll explain some of these. Um, this number here, the zero, 6 and the 0, is how many cards you have in each of your hands. So you can see how many cards your opponent has in his hand. So you can see how many options he's got and so on and so on and so on. If you see, Puffy is currently highlighted in green. This is very, very important for especially high level play uh, within the game. Uh, if the if the opponent is in green, it is their priority that turn. So priority means because the turns are done simultaneously. The turns are done simultaneously. They happen at the same time. Unlike you taking a turn, me taking a turn, you taking a turn. They happen at the same time. So I press my end turn button. It has to wait till the other person has pressed end turn before the turn resolves itself. So you have to guess really hard where the opponents are. Uh, going to play their cards and you have to guess really really well. So priority. Basically what happens first, the movement of cards happens first. So all the movement happens at the same time. So if I played cards out they would just all play out at the same time, his would play out at the same time and that's, that's it for that section. After that the ability cards play. 
So if I were to play this card for I'll just play that part. This card is called Stumble. Uh, it returns a target character in a combat zone back to its controller support zone. So if he had a card out here, I could push it back into the support zone and attack with it. But this is an ability card, so ability cards always go first. And it's if it's, if it's your priority, so if if he was playing an ability card and I was, his ability cards would go first, followed by mine, followed by his assault zone, followed by my assault zone. That's how the priority works. So, for example, if I were to kill a... if he were to attack me with a character, kill a character uh, before, for example, I could buff it up with health, if he did it on his priority, killed it, and I buffed up that turn, it would be a waste on my part because it would have uh, killed it, basically, and it would be buffing nothing. So you have like working out priority and playing via priority is essential to knowing the game well and playing the game decently. Um, that's pretty much the basic overview. I will just explain the trading post which is a huge huge uh, thing about this game. Basically what I can do click on the trading post first turn uh, I will sh I I sh I'll, sh I'll explain this only on turn one can you mulligan your hand. You can mulligan your hand and obviously it takes away one card. Uh, so, so you have five cards to start with. If you can mulligan your hand, you shuffle and you take four. If it's a bad hand, so you shuffle it and you get four cards. And you can do that as many times as you like until you have one. Um, but you can only do that on turn one. On here, so with the first option we have is pay three, shuffle a card from your hand into the deck and draw a card. Pretty simple. So I can shuffle any card from my deck, so let's shuffle the Martyr Golem into the deck, shuffles it into the deck and pulls something else out. Uh, is a great feature of the game, great feature of the game. Um, the other one underneath it is pay five draw a card, so I can just straight up pay five, pay five resources and pull a card from my deck. Can This can be very, very, very useful. If you if you don't need to play anything that turn, or you're searching for a certain, a certain card, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. So you don't need to worry about putting like card pulling abilities in your deck. You can just do it all via the trading post. This is a very important one. Pay 9 and increase base resources by 1. So if you do it on turn 9, for example, when you have uh, 9 resources, I should mention that you gain 1 resource per turn, and everyone gains the same resource per turn. So it's not alternate, it's you both gain 1 resource per turn. Unless, you, of course, you have like a wealthy noble, for example, in, in uh, support. So yeah, you can pay 9 and increase resources by 1. So if I pay it on turn 10, when I because the maximum resources you can have is 10. Uh, the maximum it goes up to is 10. You can go beyond 10 because there are cards that cost more. As you can see, there is a card in my hand called Calamity, which costs 11. And you're thinking, well, if the maximum is 10, how can you go beyond it? That's using resource cards and this ability right here to increase the resource by one. So if I were to do this on turn 9, for example, obviously I would gain one more point to reach at 10 on turn 10. But then also because I've paid 9, it would increase it by another one, so I'd have 11 permanently, so then I can be able to play that card. There are cards that cost up to 14, um, so this is a really, really important issue, uh, issue for, not issue, important uh, feature of the game as well. Um, I will just show you a artifact as well, let me just end the turn, so I can get more resources back. So as you see, the resources go up, but I have one extra resources because this Wealthy Noble is giving me one extra resource per turn. Um, so I will just explain this. This is an artifact card. So basically, you play it out. This particular card, whenever a character you control attacks alone, it gets plus five, plus five until the end of the turn. Artifact cards can be killed by certain ability cards and other things. Um, and they just sit there and they do their job, basically. They do their job. Um, they all have different abilities. As I said, they have passive ones, they have active ones, they have all kinds of stuff. Um, that's pretty much the general overview of the game. One thing I will mention, if you card out uh, you lose 10 morale a turn. But that really, really happens. Most deck sizes are about 40 cards. Um, so obviously you try and kill the opponent's health or morale, depending on how your deck is built. And that's pretty much it, guys. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would like any more info, join my stream, uh, NovaBlue353 at Twitch TV. Um, come and say hi. I am uh, the reason I stream is to help out new players. So please come by. I will give you any qu any questions you have uh, at all. Just 
I'll be happy to answer. So, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you around.